Hey guys, how's everyone doing? I hope everyone's having a great day today. I don't know about you, but I've been really busy with work and getting back into the office, adjusting to this new hybrid schedule, and it's been pretty exhausting. But I've still been very active doing my crypto mining, and I finally get a chance to get in front of the mic with you today. And I want to share some new and exciting updates with you about the T-Rex miner. I know it's been challenging to be doing crypto mining, especially with crypto prices down right now. But it goes the same with all the financial markets across the world. Seems there's a lot of uncertainty going on, but hopefully it's just temporary and mining revenue as well as financial markets will come back up to new highs very soon. I'm optimistic, but realistic too. But my strategy in the meantime, it's simple. I've already made the investment in the equipment, so I am just going to plow through and mine on and just do my best, whatever I can to just you know mine and hopefully be able to capitalize when revenue does return on the different coins we're going to be mining. So with all this going on, I want to share some really exciting news with you. The T-Rex Miner development team, they've been at it again, developing T-Rex Miner 0.2513 with some more improvements for stability, higher hash rate, and even some more improvements for dual mining. I'm going to be testing it on NiceHash in Windows as well as in Hive OS. I have a lot to cover today, so if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to press down on that subscribe button. Stick with me and let's get started. For my demonstration of the new T-Rex 25.13 beta, I'm going to be using my dedicated test rig and it has all six of the primary LHR card models on it. Some cards like the 3060 and the 3070 Ti, I have multiple variations of on this rig. Let me show you what it looks like. This is my dedicated test rig. I have a MSI RTX 3060 Gaming X Trio, an EVGA RTX 3060 XE, a Zotac 3060 Ti with Hynix memory, an EVGA 3070 LHR card, another EVGA RTX 3070 Ti LHR, a Founders Edition RTX 3070 Ti, and on the very end is an EVGA RTX 3070 Ti with a nice uh, ARGB lighting. And beneath that is an EVGA RTX 3080 light hash rate card. And on the very outside of the rig is my primary card. It's gotten very cooling. It's in my RTX 3080 Ti. It's the EVGA also with the nice lighting on. And that's all running on an HROC H110 Pro BTC motherboard powered by an EVGA 1300 watt power supply behind the motherboard and an HP 1200 watt power supply on the side. So I have a lot of power and that's my rig. I plan to demonstrate the T-Rex 25.13 beta in Hive OS as well as Windows. And in Windows, I'm gonna be running it within NiceHash using the T-Rex Miner plugin adapter that I developed. I have some exciting updates that I'm working on and finalizing, and hopefully I'll have a release for you very soon. Okay, so if you haven't already subscribed, definitely make sure you press down on the subscribe button so you're notified when that's released. But in the meantime, the existing version of the T-Rex Miner plugin adapter will still work fine with T-Rex 25.12 and even this new version of the 25.13 beta. I'm going to be testing T-Rex 25.13 beta on Windows as well as Hive OS. If you go to the GitHub site for the T-Rex Miner, you see the latest version at the time I'm recording is 25.12, which is the previous version, or it's actually the official version that's up on their GitHub site. I'm gonna have to go to their non-official site to get this download of the beta software. For my overclocking that I'm gonna be using today, I've created a separate video on my six LHR cards and how I was able to overclock them and you get great mining results. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in my overclock settings that I'm gonna be using for the remainder of this test. If you wanted to find out where did you get this copy Crypto Mining Insider of this T-Rex beta, well, it's pretty simple. If you've downloaded any version of the T-Rex Miner be folder before from their GitHub site, you'll see all the batch files, but you'll also see there's a readme file. If you open up the readme file, you'll see a lot of little notes in there. And at the very, very end of it, you'll see there's a location pointing to the Discord server, as well as beneath that is their official website, which is trex-miner.com. If you go to the trex-miner.com website, you'll see some information about the miner. If you scroll down to the bottom, you see context. You also see that same Discord group there. And if you click over to the Discord group, you're going to see a Discord page. On the left side, you're going to scroll down until you see test releases. If you click on test releases, you're going to come to the test release page on here. And I'm just going to give you some highlights of the features they list here. So it's extended the new LHR unlock functionality on Ethereum and Lithium dual mining and ergo single mining. LHR tune values aren't accurate, but once you've found the value that's stable to your GPU, you can set it manually with the dash dash LHR dash tune 
parameter to get consistent results across minor restarts. So that's important. LHR Auto Tuner has new defaults, 0.1 as the step size and 5 and 120 minutes as the intervals for going up and down respectively, meaning that in dash dash LHR Auto Tune mode full, the miner will be increasing LHR values by 0.1 every 5 minutes and decreasing it by 0.01 as soon as it starts tripping LHR mode more frequently than every two hours. That's great because if you follow my channel, you know these are pretty much the same settings that, that I've been using and sharing with you on my videos. So now that they've built in, it seems like they've adopted my settings, I feel, or at least it's pretty ironic, I would think. There's also bug fixes here. The LHR unlocker is more stable compared to 25.12. Infinite LHR lock loops should now be solved. So I have seen that on occasion, not too often, but sometimes when it hits the LHR lock, it'll just keep cascading lock, 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 until you ultimately end up having to kill and restart the miner. So they said they've fixed that. But there's a very important note here. Required drivers are 512.xx on Windows and 510xx on Linux or newer. This unlocker will not work with the older drivers. And I can personally tell you that I've tested the 472.12 driver and some other Windows drivers that were before the 512. And as soon as you start it up, it just starts spitting into LHR locks constantly. So it's definitely a requirement to get the 512xx or later drivers on your computer. There's also some known issues that will be fixed in the next version. And they're looking forward to our feedback. Beneath that is the download location. So these are locations. These are subfolders that are listed here for Linux as well as Windows. And they're all subfolders under this t-rex minor uh, domain. So this is where I've got it. I'm not encouraging you to download it. I'm just showing where I was able to get it in case you're interested. With that said, let's go over to our minor and Let's start updating our NVIDIA drivers so we have at least version 512XX or newer so we can do our testing. Switching over to the NVIDIA website, uh, you see the latest version is 512.59. And this was just released a couple of days ago and I've been hearing some great things about it. I'm gonna be downloading this version. And keep in mind too, there's multiple versions of this driver available. There's a game ready driver, there's a notebook driver, as well as I believe there's even a studio driver. So for me, I'm just going to be using the regular game ready driver. And I'll be putting a link down below in case you want to click and get that driver from the NVIDIA site. With the driver updated, let me go back and start up NiceHash. And let's see what the results are this time. Okay, so I see the plugin adapter is starting and T-Rex are starting. Let me make it full screen. Okay, I see T-Rex 25.13 beta is actually running but it's also recognized NVIDIA driver version 512.59. I'm gonna let this run and hopefully it calibrates okay and we can start getting some great hash rate this time out of it. I've let this run for over an hour now and I'm getting great results. I'm getting very consistent and high hash rates, even breaking some of my previous records. 40.13 mega hash on my 3060s. And my 3060 Ti is 47.91 and my 3070 LHR card, look at that for the first time ever. 50.15, so I've broken the 50 mega hash boundary with my 3070 card. My 3070 Ti's, I've actually increased the memory overclock a little higher as per a viewer suggestion. And look at that, 67.64, 67.07, sometimes even hitting 68. However, my 3080 and my 3080 Ti's are running about the same as they were with 25.12, but thermals on them seem a little bit higher, uncomfortably. I'm seeing 96, wow, even 98 for a minute. So I'm going to have to reduce the overclocking on that 3080 card or maybe even apply some more fans to it. For the middle cards, for the 3070 and the 3070 Ti's, that's where I really notice a good jump forward with this version of the miner. And I'm going to be still working to see what type of revisions I can get to improve my hash rate as well as my efficiency on these cards going forward. I want to see how well this performs, not just in Windows. So I'm going to be switching this rig over to Hive, where we're going to be testing some Ethereum as well as some dual mining. So let's go take a look. I swapped my rig over to be running in Hive, and I'm running this for only about 20 minutes, but I'm getting great results in it. I'm seeing the same 40 mega hash for my 3060s. I'm seeing over 50 mega hash for my 3070, 65 to 66 on my 3070 Ti's. But look, even my 3080 Ti in Hive is actually coming over 100 mega hash because I have the memory overclock running a little bit higher than I did in Windows. But my thermals actually seem to be holding a little bit better. So I don't know. I think the fans are about the same on both of them. I'm going to do a little more research and maybe it has something to possibly even do with the drivers. 
So in Hive, I'm using this with driver 510.47.03, and I'm getting great results out of this, and I'm very, very excited. It seems to be running more consistent and stable than version 25.12 was running. So I'm just really pleased with this result, and I can't wait again for this to become an official release on GitHub. Before we wrap it up for today, let's go see how the dual mining is, because there I think lies where there's going to be a difference with this miner. I wanted to take a quick look at dual mining in T-Rex 25.13 beta. And I must say the results are really epic. I'm able to dual mine and still get an Ethereum hash rate almost identical to what I was getting when I was solo mining it. So definitely a two thumbs up to the T-Rex miner team on this. But look at these numbers. I'm getting over 39 mega hash for my 3060s. My 3060 Ti is giving me 46.93. My 3070 is giving me 48.71, sometimes even 49, as I see right now. My 3070 Ti's are giving me 64.25, and the other one's 63.76. And my 3080 is 79.64. And wrapping it all up is my 3080 Ti is still giving me 96.06. And my thermals are even better than they were when I was doing solo mining of Ethereum in Windows. I don't know if that has to do something with the driver possibly. Um, I don't really know the variables on this, but I'm gonna be definitely looking into revising my overclocks more, see how I can improve my hash rate, get better efficiency and more optimal thermals out of these cards. But this is definitely a step forward. The dual mining is definitely, I think the big improvement in 25.13. So if you're dual mining Ethereum and Lithium, you're definitely gonna wanna look into this. And overall, I'm just really, really happy with these results. And it seems to be very, very stable, which to me is incredibly important. You know, having some numbers sometimes that go a little bit high and is not consistent, it's not as important. But when you have great, consistent, stable hash rate numbers, to me, that's the goal to getting the highest profitability out of your LHR cards. I'm really pleased with the progress the T-Rex miner development team has been making with the miner. It was just about two weeks ago that they released 0.25.12. And let's face it, that is an epic release. Got my highest hash rates out of all my LHR cards. It's a total game changer. And everyone's still talking about it a couple of weeks later. But now I'm seeing this and I'm getting excited again. I'm seeing 0.25.13 beta. It looks promising. I'm seeing improvements with stability, some improvements in hash rate, even getting some new highs, and definitely big improvements in the dual mining aspect. So two thumbs up to the T-Rex development team for their hard work on this. And I know we're all looking forward to this becoming a formal release. And I'm gonna be following this closely. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you press down on that subscribe button so you're notified of any progress and updates we're making on this. And if you're looking for some great overclock settings, whether it's using a T-Rex 02512, or even if you want to test this 2513 beta, definitely check out this other video. I test all six of my LHR cards, and I share all my overclock settings and mining results in Windows, NiceHash, and Hive OS. Well, that about wraps it up for today. So I hope you've enjoyed this preview of the T-Rex miner. I welcome all your questions and comments. Please put them down below. Until next time, stay safe. See you on the next video. Happy mining!